Cheers, and welcome to our couch discussion on the Voluntary Virtues Network. I'm Steve, and I'm here today again with Christy, Mike, and, and Matt. And this is part two of You're Just 17 Beliefs Away from True Freedom. Uh, last week we discussed the first three. Uh, just to recap real quick, the first three were the general population does not know what freedom is. The activities of the general population are not good indications of when and how you can be free and at what cost. And an overall decrease in freedom for the general population does not necessarily mean a decrease in freedom for you unless you are, your actions are essentially the same as those of the general population. Uh, and today we left on, that's the one I can't remember is where we left off on. Number four, a rational person is only interested in freedom he can obtain in his own lifetime. Oh, yeah. He or she. Yes, he or she. Well, this is written in the 70s. Yeah, I don't know why they would have even said that. Why a rational person would. I'm just I think we're all going to disagree on this one, but yeah. I'm not sure. Let's go ahead and start. On. <laughs> okay. Well, first of all, I want to take issue with the term rational person. Um, Fair. Well, I, I could see how you, uh, if you're going to make the statement, it should be, it is rational, it, it is only rational for someone to be interested in freedom he can obtain in his own lifetime. He or she can obtain it in his own lifetime. A rational person can at times be irrational. Correct. So what's the definition of rational in, in this? Adheres to logic? Yeah, but why would it be logical to only want to have freedom in my lifetime? It, it's irrational to even think that in, in my book. That's okay, so explain. Um, because most likely freedom will not, in the, the culture that we're looking for, will not happen in our lifetime. So, but unless we start now, it's never going to happen. We're never going to see this for our, our posterity. So, but I think I'm pretty rational to want to have to start it now. Um, so that's why I think it's rational for me to believe that um, I'm not going to see it in my lifetime. I think it's a possibility that we won't see it in our lifetime, but I don't think it's impossible. I don't think it's impossible either, but I don't think it's irrational to believe that it's not going to I would and that say, I'm still doing it for the future. I would say it's rational to work towards achieving freedom in our own lifetime. Oh, I wouldn't disagree. But to be concerned for freedom for the only than that. Right. Is, is that rational? I would say yes. I would say yes. Because oh. you, you want, like you said, freedom for your posterity. Right. And there's no, there's no reason not to attempt to achieve that. I don't see where it's irrational to want to achieve that. And that well, I think, I think this may be um, coming from object, an objectivist point of view. That it seems was, very Randian. I was thinking that when I was reading the list originally. You know, uh, recovering objectivist, by the way. So I, I, I can usually spot an objectivist when I read one. And, um, and I was sitting there thinking, like, this, this sounds like from an objectivist perspective. And if it is, then I can talk about flaws about objectivism all day. And what the, what the definition of rational is by Ayn Rand is not necessarily an objective view of what rational is, which is really kind of interesting. So, uh, yeah, that's kind of... Then we have to define what's rational, and that is a whole podcast in itself. But, yeah. I agree. Um, I think... I, I, I agree with all of you. I think it's not irrational to work towards freedom that we may not see. And I think that's rational because humans have a natural desire to procreate. They have a natural desire to want the best for their posterity and so it's not so 
keeping those in mind, I don't think it's irrational to try and work towards freedom mm -hmm. that would be for your poster posterity. And another issue is, you, while you're working towards the freedom, you don't know actually when it's going to be achieved. We have no idea. So why would you be putting a time limit on exactly. it? Exactly. Yeah. Just have fun while we're doing it. Well, Definitely well, I think, I think, I, again, I, I think this is very Randian kind of concept. I think what, what is, they're trying to say here is that it's only rational to seek freedom that you can actually, you can actually enjoy for yourself mm -hmm. because, because uh, regardless of when it actually comes, um, because, you know, when we set out to do something, that doesn't mean it's going to happen. Right. That's true. But it's rational to seek those things that will benefit us. Yeah. Well, we will if we have... I think... Yes. Well, that's... I think that's yeah. the point of I, this. I, oh, I, I can this. see that. I can see that stance. Because we do things in our own self-interest. Yes. Right. I, and I'm doing it in my own self-interest because I want my grandchildren and their kids. And you know, that's my own self-interest. Yeah, However absolutely. it is, it is. So, yes, I, I, I can look at it. And that obviously way. you can never know the, the outcome, for sure, of something that you're going to you know, venture upon and hope that it's going to work out. I mean, there's, there's failures and successes all the time. You know, you could, you could put an incredible amount of effort into something and fail, and you can put very little effort into something and succeed. So to say that like, oh, well, you know, you spend your whole life on something, you wasted your time, that was irrational. You, uh, you don't know that because you don't know what's going to happen after know. you die. That's right. right. Yeah. Uh, but what I think this is saying is that it's rational to seek those things that you reasonably think can you, be accomplished you, you can in your lifetime. That can be tangible in a sort or something. Right. Or whatever, yeah. That doesn't mean, because nobody knows the future and nobody's perfect. You can't yeah. guarantee that you're going to have freedom. Only, uh, but what this is saying is that it's only rational to seek those freedoms that you can reasonably attain in your lifetime. And I don't think I don't that's think true I because I think it's rational to seek uh, the betterment of your posterity. Yeah, same here. I, I think and in her, in Randy, and I think it's in my own self-interest to do that. I could argue that it's in my own self-interest. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, because you get the psychological and sure. emotional uh, benefit from yeah. from achieving right. or working towards bettering the lives of your children. Right. Yeah. And they'll always think about me for years to come. <laughs> yeah, and you want, you want your you want your posterity exactly. to live better than you did. Exactly. So you know. Yeah. Is this the time we? The time I realized that we've done every single podcast so far in a different location. I assume you're doing that to avoid. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming we did that to avoid drones. I don't know if that was really planned that way, but we, we so far have, yeah, we today. have not been droned, and I have not heard a helicopter, no so helicopter we're all good. Tonight. All right, staying one step ahead. Right. Exactly. Every week, different location. Sorry, guys. Mm -hmm. You won't know where we are. You'll never find You'll us. You'll never find us. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so I think, I I think, think we all yeah, I do. pretty much disagree yeah. with that one. Um, I do think, uh, just to reiterate though, I do think it's rational to seek out the freedom that we can have in our lifetime. Yeah. And that can be achieved through agorism, yeah. right. through uh, creating communities mm -hmm. of like-minded individuals. Wherever they um, might Self-sustainability, aquaponics. Um, All you know, raising your own food. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, but uh, obviously, it has to be something that you're seeking. You, it, we're not going to force it on somebody. We oh, don't everybody's want to have, a have to force it on it anybody. Is. Yeah. Yeah. There's uh, no such thing as utopia. That's that's our referring. I've used quite often when I'm trying to explain. Uh, you know, a voluntary society or anarchism to somebody. you would be like, well, what about this? What about this? And, you know, there's no such thing as utopia. The world we live in right now is not perfect. The world, uh, future world of, of voluntary society will also not be perfect. Well, that's exactly yeah. it. You know, if you think, if, if you if you get to the, take the 
what is it the blue pill? Is this the, the good pill. one? No, the, I, well, I, can, I always get them mixed up. Is well, the red the, one the, or the blue one? The, the, the red pill is the good pill. The red pill is the one that opens up your mind. The blue pill is the one that you're like, oh, okay, it's Matrix it's is great, chicken is wonderful. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so it's the red one that you want to take. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you take the red pill, so to speak, and you realize that the state does not exist. All we have are criminal entities, and it's not unreasonable to assume that in some form or fashion we're always going to deal with criminals. Oh, we will. Um, yeah. So even if we do did away from the state, you're still not going to have the perfect utopian anarchist society. But you can be freer now, and you can be free, in, and your children can be freer in the future. Well, I think it's that's why we're not focused on taking down the government, so to speak. And we're back. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, kind of interesting that as soon as I start talking about taking down the government, we get shut down. <laughs> I uh, read. But uh, we got we got the technical difficulties figured out, and we're going to move on. Uh, first thing, though, uh, we forgot to talk about the beer we're drinking. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Tonight we're drinking Lagunitas Maximus. It's an IPA, and it's really good. What do you think, Mike? Um, it's one of my favorites for sure. Top 10. 8.2%, 72 IBU. Sounds like some good numbers to me, man. Yeah. Very citrusy. Alright, so where so, we left off. So anyway, uh, I think I think we covered number four pretty well. Number five, a rational person does not count upon gaining freedom at some vague time in the future by means of sweeping social changes or other means which are beyond his control. Well kind of similar to number four. Right. What do you think, Christy? Yeah, yeah. I know I mean, you've but, run for office before. Well, yeah, and I don't, and, and that's why I don't. I'm not in politics anymore because I don't think that's where change is going to happen. Um, it, I believe change is going to happen in our culture, um, and it may might be sweeping change only because of the way humans interact with each other. That when you have a lot of people who function in a certain way, and that becomes the norm. It can be looked at as a sweeping change, but it's not something that it's going to be where the people on high tell you you have to do it. I think it's going to be a cultural change, and that's where that's that's actually what's going to have to help sustain it generation after generation. Well, I think that's what they mean by sweeping social changes. Uh, I don't think they mean necessarily political, political, although political can be tied up in that, but. A cultural change, I think, is just the same kind of idea that so they're talking about So read the question here. again? Yeah, I'd like to hear one. Yeah. Okay. A rational person does not count upon gaining freedom at some vague time in the future. Okay, so that's it. Count on some vague. No, you're right. right. Somebody who believes in freedom and really <laughs> wants to see it happen in their lifetime or their children's lifetime or not even just wants to happen sometime in the future. Um, yeah, it's not going to count on something nebulous happening. They're going to actually go out and be freedom and do the things that they need to have freedom happen. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I, think, I think the point here is, I think the key word here is some big yeah. time in the future. And counting on it. I think, yeah. I think what, the, what, what it's really saying is that we need to have concrete goals and a concrete time period, a concrete... Uh, achieving those goals. Concrete um, steps. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. For achieving those goals. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that's what I got from that question was that, at least my perspective on it, is that you have to work for it. You can't just say, oh, uh, society will at one point all agree with me and right. I won't have to right. do anything. You right. kind of have to. Get out there in some form or another. I mean, and there are ranges of activism from like posting stuff on Facebook to going to protests to, you know, arranging protests and all this sort of stuff, or, you know, doing some like heavy duty agorism and, and all that. Like, that is 
methods but to cross your fingers and hope that the rest of society will do it for you is naive at best. Yeah. Well, I don't, I don't think it's even necessarily that you're seeking for society to change sometime in the future. Even, even doing those things that you hope will lead to social change. Um, prote- government protests mm-hmm. uh, and and you know marches on DC and stuff right. like that. Th- those are all those are all activism that is looking for some kind of a social change. Yeah. And I I I think I agree with this one. I don't think that does anything really. Um, I, I think you, you might disagree with me, Mike. Uh, a little bit, yeah. But <laughs> I, I remember when I was a when I was a baby anarchist. Fair. Uh, continuing with that term, I like it. Okay. Uh, I remember we started out at uh, Monday Mises. Yeah. Group, and we would talk about uh, the book Human Action, mm-hmm. or we'd have that. Uh, remember that uh, that debate. With the democratic socialists. Yeah, 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 yeah. Stuff yeah. like that. But there by was the nothing... way, if you Google, um, uh, if you go to YouTube and, uh, and you put in anarchism, I believe it still comes up as like one of the top ten things. Yeah. Is that talk oh, strangely okay. enough? Yeah. On YouTube though. Yeah. That was an interesting debate, but I remember feeling like I should be doing something. Yeah, right. so that is doing something. I I totally disagree. I think. The conversations you have actually create our world. Well, I'm not. I'm not saying it wasn't doing something, okay. but me as a baby anarchist thought that I needed to be out protesting the government and getting arrested, oh, and no. okay. you know, I should. I should have been doing something more than just talking you about still, it. You still think that? Yeah, would that's good yeah. Idea? No. Okay. <laughs> I, I will agree with you that getting arrested. Does not help your situation. Not at all. Um, protesting, though, it, uh, what I have noticed, I'm not going to say it is the most sweeping thing that causes change. It's not like, okay, you go to a protest, and even like a big, like a really big organized thing, like say, like, uh, you know, like the uh, uh, 99% protest or, or some of the Tea Party protests that got really big. Even the really big ones do affect. Even a small change, it just it creates a, a discussion of like at least it like if you the more people you have, the less the mainstream media can ignore it. And so at one point or another, they, I mean that happened with the whole with with the Occupy Wall Street protest. Also, though, the bigger you are, the more likely you are to be con- be. Uh, oh yeah, the sw- oh, co-opted. Oh yeah, that that's very yeah, true. That's uh, true. The but- Tea Party is a prime example. I started out as a libertarian movement, and now it. You have to be a Republican. Yeah, but, I think, but I think that's kind of irrelevant to the conversation um, because the, the movement, the, the Tea Party and the Occupy, both were great, but, and they may have taken on different forms, but they got people talking about it. And that is a good thing. I don't think, they, yeah. I don't think it got people talking in the right way, though. Yeah. Agreed. I, yeah. you, had, you had people who were for the movement and you had people against the movement and there was very little talk about the philosophy behind them. I think the conversation is still young. I still think people are still talking about it. It started a lot of people talking about it. I'm just going to disagree. I think those things, regardless of whether they were pure or not, or 100% of what they could have been, they did actually get a lot of people who would not well, have normally talked about it, talking about it. The, the one thing I will say about movements like that, the and I'm going to throw the Ron Paul revolution in on top of that, Fair enough. is that a small group of people will start thinking yeah. about the philosophy and will start yeah. asking the right questions. And it doesn't uh, take a majority for things to flip, for culture to flip. It just takes that really strong minority to actually permeate into the culture. And how but become normal. again, I'm going to go back to this point about counting on some fr- uh, freedom in some vague time in the future. I think we need to be focusing on yeah. things that we can do now, 
things that will affect now and also bringing people uh, and talking about the philosophy behind the, I the ideas rather than holding up bumper sticker signs and I, I'm not that, and things okay. like that. I think what you're saying is true and I don't think that holding up bumper signs and, and protest signs are bad either. I, I just, they're both... I'm not good. saying it's bad, I'm just saying that I think it's more rational to seek out more concrete goals. You want things that are more effective at actually affecting change. Right. But I guess I don't so see different, some... different if forms you, of protest can be more effective than others. Right, but you never know who you're affecting. Somebody might be relate to that bumper sticker. Somebody, you know, we really have no, there's so many different kind of people in this world. We have no idea who we're affecting. If people Again, just you, know, you gotta be able like, to measure the effects. You like know, you don't. Not, you, you can, you can. If you, if you want to measure the effects, then that's great. But I think everybody can, can. They don't have to, there's no have to's in this can take it on to spread freedom the way they know it, in a way that they know it. It's, um, it, it, one thing... But again, again, I'm sorry to oh, interrupt no, no, you, no, but sorry, no, no. again, these are beliefs that will bring, that will bring you to freedom. And that is, that is something that I'm going to have to side with you on, is that it is completely impossible to quantitatively measure the effect of a protest. Right. Unless, of course, all of a sudden, like, the president resigns the next day. Like, you know what I mean? Or the governor or whomever. Like, oh, okay, well, that worked. Other than that, like, it's almost impossible to quantitatively measure it. Because you, you, some people came by, they read a sign, they honked, they may not have. Or... Uh, Checkpoint protests on the other hand. Yeah, yeah, those are... Those, yeah, that, that's yeah, different that, because that's you're important. actually physically helping people. And, so, and you can actually look at the numbers of how many people were getting right. stopped and ticketed and cited, which... When we started the protest, it was actually about seventy percent. And, and really, really, I think I think calling those protests is a misnomer in a way, also because what we're really doing is we're helping people you're, to avoid government thoughts. Well, legally, yeah, we're really protesting. <laughs> right. Anybody ask? Yeah, we are protesting. If the government wants to mess with us, we are definitely <laughs> protesting. That guy with the tricorder hat is protesting. Yes. Um, uh, See, I look at when I, whenever I do anything to further someone else's freedom, it, it okay, fr okay, I think we're missing, in my view, why freedom is really important in our culture. For me, I don't do it just for me. I want to live in a culture where other people live like I do. And so freedom and experiencing freedom with its ups and downs and having is a very empowering place to live. And so having people be empowered is the kind of community I want to live in. I don't want to live in people who are looking for handouts, looking to have other people live, you know, live their life. So for me, yes, it's selfish for me to want to have other people want freedom. And Absolutely, but that doesn't, that doesn't mean that we, so. we try for some vague kind yeah, of so. social change. So I, we that. talk to individuals. We build our community. So I, I think the, the, the main point... I mean, look at, look at our group here. We have probably 20 or so people that show yeah, up on a rotating monthly... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And the, the group itself has about 150 people mm -hmm. in, in, the in, in, in the larger sense. And I think you could even go as high as 300 or so actual anarchists in our area. Yeah. Oh, there's probably more than that. They're just people. That who, we know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, there so are some that, of them who well, will never well, leave their apartments. Right, exactly. Well, really, <laughs> it's, it's who we know that, that matters anyway. Fair enough. Right. So, well, who we affect. I not think the important know. thing, though, is uh, that if you can do for yourself to make yourself free, and you can show that that is working for you. That inspires others. Yeah, that's true. Right. You know, you know, I come from a Christian background. Um, and a as a, as a, uh, uh, in, in, the, in the evangelical mindset, your, I, your plan was always to 
was always to uh, completely lost my point. Evangelical mindset. Your plan was to never, never mind. mind. Okay, okay. all right. We'll, we'll move on. Okay. Next slide. I I lost it. Shall we move on? <laughs> I think we might have time for another one depending yeah. on the topic. Okay. We had 11 into it, then. Beer we'll has been consumed. Yeah. Let's, yeah. Let's the next one. We've got about right. five minutes left, I believe. The okay. next one. Okay. Freedom is not a monolithic, indivisible entity. It is not a word. Invisible, you are free. Indivisible or indivisible? Indivisible. Okay, all right. It is not a word. You are, a, you are free when you can do what you want without coercive interference. I can't agree. I can't uh, disagree with that at all. Like, if, if if I can do what I want to do, and as long as I'm not harming anybody else, again, not aggression principle. I'm not harming anybody else, and I can do what I want to do, then I am free. See, I'm. That does not mean that the rest of society is free, and that that is the uh, you know that is a very interesting aspect to being a voluntary or an, or an anarchist. You could. You could, you know, go in and out of the sh shadows, for lack of a better word, and be free and live your life, but then still be in a really, really horrible place, country, if we want to call it, geographical location in the world, and have to worry about folks with badges and stuff, and not have the rest of society be free. So I, I can't disagree with that at all. It's, it's accurate. That doesn't mean that the rest of society isn't in a horrible spot. Yeah. Here, here's my take on this. Okay... Yes. Uh, for, first of all, fo focusing on the last part, you're free when you can do what you want without course of interference. My father growing up would tell me that if a cop wanted to search my room, he would let him do it. All right. He... Free of coercion would allow jackbooted thugs into our house to search anything they wanted because he felt like if I don't have anything to hide, then there's not what what's the problem? Right. He was using it. Uh, it it's the it's the status mindset the 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 slave speak so to speak of. Accurate. I'm free well, because see. I'm. Because the things that I want to do are not illegal. Right. Well, and here, that actually brings up something that I've been wanting to bring along with freedom. Free, freedom actually is freedom and doing the things that may harm somebody. That is freedom. Now, we culturally won't like killing, murder, having your dad, you know, narc on you. You know, those things are things that we, we don't find acceptable. But freedom really is bad shit, too. It unencumbered bad shit. So we have to look at, is it right to kill? Is it, you know, is it okay? But, but In it, a free society, do we want to so, live that so way? I, I think the thing with that would be that if you expect a free, uh, the, the freedom, which is the freedom the unencumbered, from coercion, exactly. that then you're expecting others to not coerce you. So in order, when you're actually committing aggression against somebody else, then that is where it becomes a problem because then you are now. Well, they're in somebody. freedom, though. They're in freedom. But that person is free. But if, right. but you should you should you should allow the same freedom to others. Yeah, but that's not what freedom is. Freedom is unencumbered to yourself. But but I think when you're talking. I know in the way we want to live, it's not like that. In the way we want to live, we don't want to live with you know all those things. But that's a different that that's where people go when they hear freedom. They go, oh well, that's all this other stuff, and it's true. I think there is a sense of that. What we have to do is explain that freedom is all of that, but we don't. We want to live in a culture that denounces murder, denounces, if, you know. I, I don't think so. If you're violating the nap, then you're violating somebody else's freedom. So, so I, 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 think, think, I think freedom... But freedom would, in itself so, is... So if, if you were the only person on that planet, then right. you would be completely free. You can't really argue with that. Um, but I think we are going to... <coughs> but you can't up. violate well, somebody else's well, freedom if... We're going to need to wrap this up. Because oh. we've only well, got about... Yeah, the fact of reality that. that if there's more than just you, you know, you can't just well, kill other people because they will interfere with that. So I think yes. we're going to need to discuss this topic next week. <laughs> okay, we'll, we'll continue this discussion next week.
I prefer peaceful uh, freedom, a um, uh, 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 violent uh, freedom to a peaceful slavery, yes. to paraphrase Thomas Jefferson. Yeah. <laughs> And unfortunately, we didn't get to robot sex ah, again no this robot time. Sex. Yeah. We never get to robot sex every single time. We Cheers. will eventually fi finish this episode. Cheers. One day. <laughs> One day. Or the, this list. Yes. Uh, everybody, Look at the uh, list. have a good day. Look